At Omaha Beach, black soldiers of the 320th Anti-Aircraft Balloon Battalion released barrage balloons to protect the Allied troops and ships. African-American medics tend to the men wounded in the bloody battle. The number of casualties on Omaha Beach was phenomenal. We had never seen that many or even thought that there would be that many casualties. I helped along with other medics to dress and to uh, uh, do the best we could with the wounded. Port companies arrive in Normandy. They work 30, 40, 50 hour shifts, building docks and unloading supplies that will sustain the Allied push toward Germany. General George Patton's Third Army breaks out from the Normandy beachhead. To supply Patton's troops in their dash across France, the Transportation Corps establishes the Red Ball Express. Nearly 70% of the soldiers who man this massive effort are African American. The 469th Quartermaster Unit is in charge of 30 truck companies. They deliver food, ammunition, and fuel to the troops, and transport prisoners and casualties to the rear area. These unsung heroes of the road live up to their motto, Keep them rolling, keep them supplied, keep them smiling. During World War II, the Red Ball, they, they constantly was going all the time. No stopping, always on call, any time of day or night. The Red Ball Express carries 8,000 tons a day for four months. From August to November, they will haul more than 400,000 tons of supplies. By the end of 1944, nearly 480,000 African Americans are serving overseas. In World War II, the African American experience, at times it was not nice. I was quite frustrated with what was going on. We had to keep our thoughts and our minds on the big picture instead of worrying about segregation. The regiment really was not as well equipped and as well trained as it should have been. 92nd Division was named for the Buffalo Soldiers of the 9th and 10th Cavalry. The 92nd Infantry Division is reactivated in 1942. Only 20 years after they had carried their battle flag into World War I, the proud 92nd would fight racism in training and on the battlefield. We were victims of uh, being sent to locations where Negroes couldn't do any harm to cities they were stationed near. Segregationist army policies and white citizen protests make it difficult to find places to station all black units. With the all black 93rd Infantry Division stationed at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, no other single post is available for the 92nd. When the 93rd ships out to the Pacific in 1943, Fort Huachuca opens for the 92nd white commanders of black units were southern selected officers and I found personally and other black men found personally that men who were generally not from the south were more considerate toward us, more respectful toward us and uh, we, we enjoyed serving under them more so than from uh, under the uh, white southern officers. Well, the general feeling of the white leadership in the units that I was in, my, this is, I'm, I'm speaking of my own self personally, that uh, they didn't think very much of us. They didn't think we had the intelligence to uh, even pull the trigger and shoot straight. Army practice kept white officers from serving in units where they were junior in rank to any black officers. This created tensions in the 92nd. This practice limited the use of black officers, and more importantly, restricted their rank. I was angry. It made me feel very, very angry. Uh, the fact that uh, my intelligence was insulted every time that I would uh, make a suggestion uh, on, on a tactic. The black officers were never given any latitude on, on in any command situation at all. I was downgraded because I was black. 
The 92nd is commanded by Southerner Major General Edward M. Allman. It is in a climate of racial mistrust that the 92nd trained for combat. Brigadier General Benjamin O. Davis, Sr., on an inspection tour, noted that Major General Allman had overlooked the human element in training, with no thought to establishing racial understanding. My combat team was one of three combat teams in the 92nd Infantry Division. We were informed after maneuvers by the division commander that the 3-7th Infantry Combat Team would prepare for overseas movement. We were going overseas, so we were just going overseas. And we, we didn't know where we were going. We went into combat with the 5th Army, who Mark Clark commanded. We were attached to the 1st Armored Division. The 370th Infantry and the 598th Field Artillery made combat ready with the best soldiers of the division deployed to Italy. They joined Allied forces fighting along the Gothic Line, stretching from north of Massa eastward to Bologna. The 92nd's 370th combat team fights aggressively and maintains contact with Axis forces. After six weeks of Allied success, the Axis forces withdraw into the Rommel-designed Gothic line. The German soldiers in Italy were seasoned soldiers. They had come from another front. Namely, I think most of them came from southern France. They knew what they were doing. When you ran up against uh, a, a bunch of them, you, you knew you were in a fight. The rest of the division arrives in late October and November and goes into the line. Two point four inches of rain in 24 hours ending 9th December flood a regimental bivouac area of the 92nd Division at a point 17 airline miles south of Bologna. A field artillery battalion improvises a ferry to carry ammunition to a stranded battery across the swollen stream. The casualties experienced by the 92nd have a devastating effect on unit combat effectiveness. Black replacements are sent into theater with little or no combat training. Many cannot read or write. They are ill-prepared for combat. The morale of the black soldiers, the uh, enlisted personnel in the, in the 370th at the time that I joined them was very low. Most of these soldiers that were, were draftees, they didn't want to be there. And when they got there, they were treated very badly. They weren't treated like human beings. Despite the handicap, many units of the 92nd distinguished themselves in battle. Operating in the Sergio Valley, the 365th and the 366th Infantry, supported by the 597th Field Artillery, are particularly effective, seizing ground from German and Italian units and beating back numerous counterattacks. From fall 1944 to spring 1945, the 92nd helps to hold the Gotham Line, but the entire 5th Army remains stalled. Elsewhere on the Italian front, continued heavy rains, floods, and high winds make Allied offensive operations virtually impossible. Reports from the front say it's impossible to exaggerate the harshness of this year's Italian winter. In April, the 5th Army begins its final drive through the Gothic Line. There have been changes. The 92nd is reorganized as an integrated force. Attached are the famed Japanese-American 442nd and the white 473rd Infantry, along with the black 370th. They roll up the western Italian coast, liberating the ports of Massa and Genoa. Many African Americans distinguished themselves in the Italian campaign, but received little recognition. There was a definite program afoot to suppress acts of bravery or acts of heroism on, on the part of the black soldiers. I never heard any stories or any comments concerning bra uh, bravery by black soldiers from any of the white officers. 
And every time we turn around, we ever hear, hear about Axe and Bravey and the white soldiers. For the 92nd, World War II ends on April 30th, 1945, when German and Italian troops they had fought since August surrender. Most of them were excited. They felt as though they were going to get a chance to see some action. Under the leadership of General MacArthur and Admiral Nimitz, Allied forces undertook the island-hopping campaign that led to the Japanese homeland. Black troops are in the thick of the ferocious fighting. The first African-American unit to engage the enemy in ground combat was the 1st Battalion of the 24th Infantry, fighting on Bougainville. 